wanted to do a video on quarantining fish. On Facebook or forums, people are often asking, do I have to quarantine my fish? How long should I quarantine my fish? What, how, you know, what should I do um, as far as medications go? And basically my feeling on quarantining is, you know, it's something you have to decide for yourself. Is the hassle and expense of quarantining um, worth the risk you're going to take by not doing it. And there definitely is a risk. Um, some people could go for many years without ever having a problem. And other people can tell you that, you know, you buy uh, half a dozen tetras or something, put them in your tank, and the next day all of your fish are dead. I've definitely had that happen to me over the years. Um, but by the same token, if you... You know, if you live in a small house or apartment and uh, don't have the room, to expect someone to have a whole extra setup is a bit much. So, you know, it's basically the risk versus reward sort of thing. Um, I'm lucky in this uh, new house I moved into a couple of years ago. I have a lot of space. I have this uh, sort of room off my uh, fish room where I keep my fish with space uh, to have the quarantine tanks hidden away. It's also my laundry room, and the other direction, which I won't show you, is my um, office, which is kind of a mess right now. Um, but I have these two 40-gallon breeders set up. They were from the Petco dollar a gallon sale. One of them was my old Corridoras tank, and the other one I bought specifically just as a quarantine tank. I got them on metal stands, so that wasn't expensive and just use leftover filters and lighting systems I had, you know, that I was hanging on to. Um, one of them, this one, is where I have about a dozen of my remaining baby uh, Steatocranus, and uh, they just live in there permanently, because uh, I don't know what to do with them, basically. And then the other one is mostly empty, except for some plants and snails uh, most of the time. I considered breaking them down between um, quarantining, because sometimes, you know, I might go months and months between um, getting new fish. But just the hassle of doing that and then resetting them up, I just decided not to bother and just pretty much leave them running uh, year-round for now, at least. Um, so this tank has... Uh, two new Alestis Tetras to go with the one that I have in my um, African Tetra tank, and also four new Gara Congoensis, which are these little guys at the bottom. Because when I bought the one I have in that tank now, I didn't know they were social because there's not much information about them. After I got them, I found out they are sort of social. So they came up for sale again, and I bought four more. And these fish, um, they've been fine. There's been no sickness, no losses, no problem. It's actually been over a month. I think it's been about five weeks that I've had them in here. And probably any day now, I'll put them into the main 120 with the rest of the African Tetras. And I don't foresee there being any problem. I just wanted to make this video first before I did that. Now, this tank over here is a fish mostly that uh, got a new school of cardinal tetras for the 100 gallon, and also a school of pygmy corridoris and three corridoris equus to go with the two that I have already. So, in, and then there's also um, a half dozen Siamese algae eaters, which I'm planning on putting in the African Tetra tank just to deal with the algae in there. Although they're actually not doing such a good job eating this hair algae on the plants, but anyway. So this tank, the Cardinal Tetras, right after I bought them, I bought 20 and I lost six pretty much right away. So that's definitely reason for concern. So even though it's been five weeks, uh, it's been stable, I haven't lost any more, they seem healthy. Um, I might quarantine them for two months instead of, uh, you know, a month or six weeks, um, just to be 100% certain that there's no problem. 
uh, little tetras or little fish in general tend to be delicate. Um, the travel time to get here um, could have been a problem or there could have been some disease. There could be, I've had big issues with cardinal tetras in the past where sick fish completely obliterate all my existing fish. So it's something I wanna be a little cautious on. Uh, that 100 gallon tank already has a school of about 50 cardinal and green cardinal tetras and green neons and hundreds of dollars worth of corydoras so i'm not going to do anything to risk those fish so it could be two months that they stay in here it could be three months and only when i'm feeling 100 percent certain that i'm not going to have any you know mystery illness occurring um will i feel confident in putting them in that tank um I think it is probably fine because out of with those six losses, there haven't there hasn't been a single other one in in um, five weeks. But it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, I would be pretty upset if I put these in the tank and then lost you know half the fish or all the fish in there. So that's basically what it comes down to. It's just a, a you know personal feeling of of risk versus reward. It could be monetary. Uh, like with my fish, uh, in both my main big display tanks, the fish, some of the fish I have are, you know, reasonably expensive and I can't afford to suffer huge losses. Um, or it could be sentimental. It could be, you've had a fish for, you know, I have a, another tank where I've had the fish for five years and would feel pretty rotten if I introduced some pathogen that wiped them out. Um, and, you know, so it's different for everyone. Everyone has their own feeling on, you know, how attached they are to certain fish or how much of a risk they can take financially. Um, it's just something you have to sort of decide for yourself. As far as medication, the only thing I definitely do is um, a dosage of um, Prazipro, which kills internal parasites. Um, and I do that no matter what. It's mostly a concern for wild-caught fish, which many of these are. Um, they almost always will come in with parasites. Um, and then I have two uh, flake foods that I feed them that um, are supposed to kill parasites. So I do um, a round of each of those flake foods. Um, and hopefully that takes care of any issues there might be. I don't do any other sort of treatment preventative because I don't think it's a good idea to treat fish for something they don't have. Um, so, you know, I just watch and see if there's a problem. Uh, when I got my uh, Phenicogrammus Fantastique, I also had some one-line, African one-line tetras with them, and the African one-line tetras got columnaris. So I did treat those, but I didn't preemptively do it. I waited and, and saw that there was a problem and then treated them. Um, I don't, I just don't think it's a great idea to, you know, be dosing fish with antibiotics if they don't need it. Um, so that's not something I would preemptively do. You just have to pay close attention, see if there's any losses, try to figure out what's causing the losses. It could just be, you know, normal transportation shock, or it could be something more serious. And fish diseases are tricky to diagnose sometimes. You may not know why you lose fish. So anyway, like I said, I've got the room and, you know, there's value in the fish that I have. So I thought it was worth it to do, um, you know, for my current setup. But there were periods of time when I, you know, I lived once in a studio apartment and just had one big display tank and I didn't have room for a, a, even a small quarantine tank. And, you know, and I sometimes would have losses when I introduced new fish and that was just something I had to live with. Um, so you kind of have to decide for yourself. Uh, so yeah, that's my feeling. Uh, let me know what works for you or if you have any questions based on what I've said, if I left anything out. And yeah, thank you for watching.